Why should you stop doing code reviews? I would like to thank Baptiste Barberi and uh, Antoine Guy, Maxence uh, Zadjilic, and Raphael S. Ward for their time. Love. Okay, awesome. Code review is one of the most used methods in software development. We all know what are the benefits of doing code reviews. Okay, yep. Okay, so why should we stop? To sum it up, doing code reviews enables verification of new code quality by identifying future bugs, ensuring tested code, and ensuring readable code. I don't, uh, code reviews doesn't do this. Readable code is debatable. Primarily, I've always taken it as this. I don't think it's this at all. That's CI. CI is ensured that you test code. Okay. 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 I hope this isn't an AI article. I really do hope this ain't no AI article. What, chances of AI article? Press one. Press one in chat if you think this is going to be an AI article. One in chat if this is going to be robots will now do AI. We'll do it. Okay. Well, hopefully not. Moreover, by reading code written by others, developers can learn from others. A junior developer can learn by reading the code of a more experienced one. This is true. It's actually a great way to get familiar with the project is just seeing how people make changes. They can ask questions using comments. Vice versa, a senior developer can check the code of a junior and provide more constructive feedback. I won't go deeper into code review benefits in this article. More information you can read an amazing work by Trisha G, uh, for instance, in this blog post. However, in code, let's see, is code review really worth doing? What are the drawbacks we face during code review? Nitpicks, nitpicks. I don't like the function. Okay, you use length, but I like get length. Okay, I like verb. Can I do verb? Okay, we want a verb first. Sh shut up. I'm sure you face some of them several times. All right, code reviews. Code review pitfalls. All right, the ping pong review. Some comments are added, you take them into account. Some new comments are added, you take them into account. New comments are added, and so on. It's really frustrating for the merge request author, even more when it happens with several reviewers. Yeah, I mean, that that does suck. It does suck when you expect people to like, th there should be a timeline, right? If, if you're tagged on a PR and you just do nothing for like a day and it's for your job, kind of sucks. You know what I mean? Like you, what you should have is LGMT with uh, L LGMT uh, DNL. Right? Looks good to me. Didn't look. <laughs> Did not look. Right? You should just have a way to say, I'm not going to look. I'm not reviewing. I'm backing out. Because it's ridiculous to have someone review. You do all these changes, then someone else review and want different changes, and their changes are like conflicting and stuff like that. Totally buy that. The redesign review. Once the merge request opens, you receive uh, comments indicating a large design issue. It's not a simple correction, but the whole implementation must be redone. This is totally normal. This is fine. This is a demoralizing situation for the author and reviewers. Uh, no, this is perfect. You should have these. Literally yesterday, on, uh, on live on Twitch, um, I did some harpoon management and we closed down a PR. Oh my goodness, there's so many more. How the hell did this happen? How did we get more? How are you doing so much, Willow Thief? I forgot. I, I, let's see. Ah, oh, there you go. This one. Someone took a swing at doing this and I just closed it down and said, no, we're going a different direction, right? Because it just needed something different. Like this is totally normal. Like this happens. Like this isn't it. This is the wrong design. Uh, Willow Thief, you're coming in without my vision in your head. And that's totally normal. Like I wouldn't expect Willow Thief to be able to do everything, right? He shouldn't have that expectation. I am wholly appreciative of his attempts and strong effort. Look at this. He's really trying to make, look at that. Willow Thief, Willow Thief, Willow Thief. He's trying to make Harpoon great absolutely love it and i'm super super thankful for it but like sometimes the redesign is fine because the redesign just isn't in the direction you want to go right design should precede coding no it should no 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 the heavy design first crowd is crazy to me the thing is is that someone gets issued a ticket you attempt to solve it now you may have solved the bug and successfully solved the bug but the reality is it may be some other issue or some completely orthogonal way in which you want something to be done and that previous example was a perfect version of it okay and the reason why oh my goodness and the reason why that made sense for me to show you this is because they wanted the ability here i'll show this uh willow thief wanted the ability to pre-populate empty lists by adding in a uh extra option called pre-populate and if that thing exists then we'll just call it and allow you to pre-populate the list this is a perfect fix no amount of design ahead of time for him would have changed how he implemented it the thing is he didn't know what i wanted right and that's okay like you can't just get everybody together to design every single last possible thing it's like untenable you kind of have to catch those strays as things are changing and sometimes it causes offset stuff but that's just it like do you really want a non-coding architect like that's your that's your other option you need non-coding architect yeah trash knows trash knows non-coding architect sucks okay they're the worst they are genuinely the worst I already have that they are the worst uh, so basically no one else can commit to the project because no one can read your mind uh no plenty of things can be plenty of things can be done without that so disconnected yeah plenty of things here look at this the PR literally after that, since uh, the PR literally after that, uh, right here, 
merged in because it was perfect. It's exactly, it's just like, that's just what needed to be done. Totally legitimate. Plenty of things, like, I can't confirm. I'm a non-coding architect. Can't confirm. Trash is just trash. Strong opinions on that one. The ghosting review. Comments are added, taken into account, and then you wait for the approval. The reviewer has disappeared and you have to wait before merging. Even if the other reviewers have approved the merge request, you have to wait for the ghost reviewer. This, on the other hand, is super effing annoying. Completely agree with that. This is just bad etiquette. If you ask for changes and then you just never come back again, it's different on open source. Open source, I like, take into a completely different account than in like work setting, right? Work setting, I expect you to be engaged. Open source, I don't. I leave a pull request. You say change these things. I make those changes. You don't come back for a month. Hey, man, that's your project. It's not mine. You do you. Okay, you're busy. You go be busy. You go be busy. All right, like I... Very, very different. You got to come in with two different uh, mentalities. Waiting for review. Your merge request is not the most attractive and you're still awaiting approval. That, yeah, that I mean, yeah, that happens. Uh, TLDR, I, at Netflix, we can just uh, merge without approval. I think that's one of the most important things is that you have to have the merge without approval because if people are going to just drag their feet, you just merge. Like, hey, that's their fault. It's their responsibility to code review. You don't want a code review? Like, not my problem if I give you like days to review and you just don't review anything. If I ping you on Slack and you're like, yeah, I'll get to it. And then days later, you still haven't got to it. Like at what point is it like no longer my problem? This is your problem, right? I hope you enjoy the code. You had your chance. <laughs> That's how I look at it. At least I don't think other people look at it that way. That's how I look at it. The changes are very important, but reviewers uh, didn't uh, read it before approving it because it was too long. Yes. Present. Yes. This, this one. This happens constantly. The presentation review. You have done a huge refactoring or the changes you bring really complex to review and your team is asking you for a presentation or a mob review. Now you have to find time uh, where everyone is available to do the code review. It's only the beginning of your merge request journey. This I think is fine. If you do a big refactor, yeah, guess what? Of course. Right, that I think is completely reasonable. The, con uh, the uh, convention style review. Some comments on the merge are merely about coding style. For instance, there are too many break lines or spaces. These kind of reviews could be avoided with a linter. Yes, a linter and a prettier, stupid. Too small merge requests. One line of code has been modified. You tend to think that it will be approved but the mer uh, and merge fast, but instead it triggers a lot of discussions. What are typically in bike shed effect? Yes, yes, I have, I have seen these things happen a lot. But sometimes it is good. The problem is, is that often one line changes are exposing bigger problems. If that's the case, if you're ex if you're actually like talking about big problems, like, hey, I don't want another if statement. I think we should change how we're doing things. That's fine. It's hard. I mean, it's hard. Keep rebasing review. Your merge request is waiting for approval while others' merge requests are being merged and you have to keep your code up to date and potentially resolve conflicts. Aye, aye. That's just, I mean, that's just sad. That's the penalty of being in a big, t uh, a moving target, right? I don't think this, this isn't fixed. This isn't a code review problem. This is just working with distributed code bases, right? It just sucks. The inconsistent feedback review. Sometimes you get a comment and you don't know how to handle it. Most of the time, the review uh, expressed uh, a feeling more than a clear solution. For example, this function seems too complicated for me. Yeah, I mean, you should be able to respond with, you need to be more actionable about your feedback. Like this isn't very actionable. So can you please do something? I have a coworker. So I actually, it's very interesting because I prefer refactors to be done by themselves. And I have a coworker that prefers changes with refactors. And so me and him have gone back and forth on this and I'm working in one of his projects. So I'm going to allow him, I, I, I have to do a change plus a refactor. And for me, that's really, for me, that's really odd, but for him, that's perfectly reasonable. And so, you know, like sometimes you like one of his functions is too big. And I was like, Hey, can I just break it down? And uh, I'd like to kind of put it into some steps for me to kind of understand it a little bit better. Uh, obviously he just built it to get something done. I, I, it's very clear what it's doing. It's just, it's doing it super long. I'd rather just see it in something smaller. Uh, not clean code style, but just clean enough code, right? Clean enough, you know? So this happens. This is reasonable, reasonable stuff. After merge review, uh, the merge request has been approved and merged. Great. But a new challenger has appeared. The challenger is perhaps knowledgeable about this project on uh, the technologies used and wants to make changes. Most of the time, the new merge request will be opened by this person without sharing it with the uh, de uh, first developer. I don't see the problem with that. Like, to me, that's perfect. Like, I mean, that is literally the thing. Clean enough. Yeah, clean enough code. I'm all about clean enough. There, there's times where being too clean is bad, right? Like clean code itself with like these uh, these abstract requirements of like four line functions or like Martin Fowler's, if I see 12 lines in a function, it's a smell to me. To me, that's crazy, right? That's absolutely insane talk. No amount of lines in a function makes it clean or unclean in my book. It's about what is the thing doing. 
how many steps are being performed. Some steps are long ass steps. Like that's normal and it's okay. Java brain, it, Java brain's real. Expressing or receiving feedback that can be complicated. People can take it personally and lead them to tensions on the team. Yeah, this has happened. That's, I mean, that's just, that's team dynamic. That's not gonna change with code review. That's just working with people. The elderly merge request. The merge request is open for a long time and it could be a couple weeks, a month or even a year. The merge request is so old that some most of the developers don't even know if it's still relevant. Yeah, I'd close it down. I feel like you should be able to just have an auto close one month old uh, PRs. <laughs> Dude, if you can't figure it out after a month, try again. Take a new swing. Uh, the not working review. The CI pipeline passed and the merge request has been approved, but once merged and deployed, it doesn't work. Let's do the full cycle again. Yeah, I guess that's, this is interesting because it's like, do you, uh, do you merge, uh, do you, do you, do you roll forward the fix or do you roll back? Do you revert or do you roll forward? I'm a big fan of obviously anything that's not production facing, always roll forward, right? Like that makes sense for production, roll back to the previous production in production. And then your code base, you roll forward the change, right? Rolling back's crazy crazy stuff. Uh, the full-time job uh, review. The code review can be a full-time job. A developer in the team could spend their entire time doing code review. Furthermore, it's not uncommon to have developers in a team who are spending way more time than others doing code reviews. Not everyone does code review in a balanced way, and it can lead to struggles within the team. Fair? Fair. Yeah, that's fair. The worst thing about all those patterns is that they can be, uh, can be accumulated. You can be in a ping pong review and suddenly land with a ghost review, keep up rebasing and fight. Yeah. Yeah. The, the combinatorics. Yeah. Okay, so stop doing code reviews. So I mean, I like that. I like all these code reviews because I've I've had most of them. Like I, I I really do feel this. I I just saw the word TDD appear down there. Very worried right now. So what are the solutions to avoid these situations? Most of the problems could be avoided by sharing early. Before what? For instance, sharing about coding guidelines, architecture, coding practices. So coding guidelines, architecture is hard because who shares about that? Can you share about everything that you're doing? Sometimes people have to learn by looking. Coding guidelines. I mean, lint and prettier should be your guidelines. Coding practices and guidelines are kind of the same thing. I think it's pretty obvious if you've been pr programming at any length when you're doing the difference between hacking and not hacking or design before jumping into the code. I'm not really into those kind of things, right? Like if you got a linter and prettier set up, let somebody do some looking. Let somebody try to understand. Let someone come up with a prototype. They're unfamiliar with the code base. Let them debug through. Let them learn some stuff. You know how much more you will learn by debugging through, getting out the debugger, walking line by line, and trying to guess and hack into a change and saying, hey, I gotta, I have to change. You want to tell me how to do this better? Like that's honestly the way better approach to this is you create a change. You hack it together. And then somebody who wants to play ball, not everybody wants to play ball. That's totally fair. Also, I've, I've worked with people who do not like this approach and that's fine with me. But to me, I think this is the best way to learn a code base. You hack together a change. You don't know what you're doing. There's no amount of explaining that could ever help. So what do you do? You make a change. You say, hey, help me review it and help me do this the right way. Now that I understand the state what's going on, you help me do it the right way. And if you work with a good teammate, they'll be totally down to jump and do that. If you don't work with a good teammate, it's looked at as a hassle. Like that's just that. I think that's, I personally, I think that that's the best way. Cause you know, doing these architecture talks where people are like, oh yeah, architecture. Oh yeah, you gotta do all these things. This is what we're doing. Then you go into the code and guess what? Like you got some boxes and some arrows, but you are still gonna make the exact same hack because you still don't know what you're doing. Code and architecture, you know? It's interesting. Mentor-based reviews are the best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but when the when the feature is not necessarily done, uh, and sometimes it's better to take five minutes during the development of the request instead of the post. Yes, I agree with that. Like that's why I like the idea of make a change. I don't know what I'm doing. Help me change my change into what you want to see because I don't know what I'm doing. I think that that, that there's some good stuff. I personally think that that's that's just a it's just an easier way because my role at my job is I have to jump around to many many projects. I've been in a lot of projects. I've been in f I've been in four separate projects in the last year and a half, and so often I'm having to just go from zero to sixty on a completely brand new code base. Right now I have six separate code bases. I have to become good at in the next couple months. There's a lot. There's a lot I have to understand. And so for me to do that, it's going to take a lot of effort and reading and becoming good at something. And so I need people that want to help me, right? I need people that when I make a change, they go, hey, can you just walk me through what you actually envisioned? And here's the change I made. Help me like align with what you're thinking. It's the only way. And anyone that thinks it's differently, it's great. It's great, great, great talk. Uh, it's merely an agile, uh, agile value. Having feedback and so, uh, and as soon as possible, feedback coming from a code review is too late. I disagree with that. I just simply disagree with this statement altogether. In my experience, code review creates more problems than it solves. Code review is only uh, good when developers are uh, work mostly in an asynchronous way in a different time zones. I, I actually just sheerly disagree with the conclusion of this article. I think he points out a lot of good things, and I think we should fix the things that are that are wrong. 
Like I think people should not do ghost ghosting on on a work on work repos. Again, open source, completely different. Ghost all you want. It's your project. I've never disagreed so much with an article and then disagreed so hard on its conclusion. But in the most cases, developers are working in the same team on the same project at the same time, and code review is only a way to avoid exchanges with the colleagues. Nowadays, code review is a cargo call. Uh, most of the time, code review should be replaced by pair programming, or better still, ensemble programming. I, assembly programming, assembly, assembly program, assemble programming, ensemble. Is that ensemble or is that assemble? Assemble. I don't know what that word means. Also known as mob programming. Okay. I, I like, I like pair programming in the sense that you may like, like I already explained my position earlier. You get the idea. And that would be pair programming at the end. Fair. Uh, but just doing it with somebody else, I totally disagree with that. Like doing the feature itself with somebody else robs you of your learning. When you watch somebody efficiently walk through code, they're avoiding 1,000 pitfalls that you don't know about, they know about. And so if you don't go into those pitfalls, you don't understand it. They're going through and they're walking through how the state of the data changes with the program and you don't get to know all that. You kind of just arrive to the conclusion. There's a huge amount you lose from doing pair programming when you're not first struggle, like struggling yourself. You gotta struggle. The struggle is just so important. In a way, you have at least two people working on the same piece of code and you always have. I see, okay, so this is a pair programming thing. Knowledge sharing, both business and technical knowledge, proofreading, develop, uh, developing cohesion and team spirit. I literally hate pair programming. If I, dude, my team spirit would be, I would, I would turn into Lilith, okay? I'm like, that's it. We're killing everybody. <laughs> that's it. Unleash the devils. <laughs> Unleash the horde. Like I dude, I would lose my crap. Lose it. Doing pair programming, doing uh, synchronous development saves from ghosting, from ping pong comments, TLDR reviews, waiting for PR convention style review and so on. Actually working together avoids all the pitfalls of code review. Yeah, but dude, the time. There's, yeah, again, I think, I think, I just, I'm still not into this. Uh, if you're developing using TDD, pair programming can even be more fun by doing ping pong pair programming. There's a game you can play with TDD where you make a test and you have to make the person pass the test, but they don't get to know what the test is doing. And the tester does not get to know what the person's programming. And you see how complicated you can do TDD. And you see if a person can do that. It's pretty fun. Lastly, I won't debate about the simplistic idea of having two developers working together on the same task is more expensive compared to having them work alone. The synchronization process in all steps is one of the most expensive and code review is one of them. I actually just fully disagree with this statement. Sometimes a change will take me like three days. I just, I, I mean, I understand, like I, I, I agree with all of these things that he has said. It's just the conclusion is too hard-lined, right? I like everything else, like every, like I agree, like especially if you, if you, if you you don't know the code base and you don't know what you're doing and you want to sync with somebody outside of a code review, I think that's actually a much better place to do that. Pair programming after you built it, pair walkthrough and pair altering, really, really good. You do all those things, you rework it, you have the person explain stuff and you come back and you put them on the hook. You're doing a code review, but live. And then at the end, you put your PR up, they approve it, but you still may want somebody else who's familiar with stuff looking it over because you don't want to waste like three people's time. Like just ain't no way. Are you working uh, from home or from the office or hybrid? Uh, from home. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. LGMT a gen. Let's go. I like this article. I like the article. I love this is a great article, by the way. This was a great article. Really appreciated it. Thank you very much, VGA, Vajalit. It's a great read, right? This is a great read. Absolutely loved it.